Hey guys, Infidel 1258 here. So we are going to get into our rank grind. As you, some of you know, oh, we were, we were out of commission because of technical difficulties, but we are back and we have made it in our secondary account. We made it to silver, currently in silver three because we just lost because we just forfeited, I think two in a row. Um, but we are on the cusp of silver two, and that is kind of the most we can get out of this power level. So unless we want to rent a little more, this is kind of the 15 loot chest reward threshold is probably where we're going to land with this, this deck. But where our rank is currently 1266, so that's our secondary account, DE Cunningham. The primary is uh, 122962, pushing for diamond two, and again, we're we're aiming to do really well and you know finish in the top twenty of, of the Diamond League. So we'll see. Unfortunately, I already claimed this. I tried to do a little separate video on my daily quest because every day I wanted to share my daily quest rewards so that you guys can have a one minute little digestible video that shows you what sort of rewards you can get with this game. If you're not already playing it, then you can just tune in and see those. Uh, they'll be in my short section, and everybody can just see how well or how poorly they pay. Um, unfortunately, due to no fault of my own, uh, Splinterlands just wouldn't show those loot chests. And then, and then you know how sometimes it says you already opened them, so you can't do the whole big reveal. But if I come over to my Explorer, we can look at the we can look at the rewards right here. So we got one Nightmare, one Charlock, and it shows you the values: twenty nine cents and twenty six cents. Those are the valuations based on um, the current market pricing. As I pointed out before, current, uh, any monsters that are being issued right now are saturated upon the market. Like there are a lot of them being printed and, and, and offered uh, as rewards. And so as a result, the prices are lower than they will be in the future. And that's almost by necessity because of the nature of, you know, supply and demand. And so um, I don't really consider these 29 cent cards, 26 cent cards. I, I consider them, you know, functional and helpful in terms of winning the game and so if you think about your car any sort of cards you, you are able to accumulate when you play this game in that way i think you're going to be better positioned to grow your account and successfully climb in the future if you sell these things for 26 cents each you have to ask like what are you going to get for that what's why is is that 26 cents more valuable to you than this than a deflationary asset that is limited in supply and um, that is currently saturated upon the market, but that one day will not be. If you think that through, I think you see, you know, these are small, this would be small economic reward for, for a car that could, could really be something someday. I like both these cards. Nightmare is particularly powerful given its speed and its blast damage. Um, and then we also got, you know, 45, 60, 90, 100, maybe 150 dark energy crystals, probably another, you know, buck 25. And these potions are whatever you know they if you don't know they help you when you um, buy booster packs the yellow ones increase the likelihood that your future booster packs will have gold foil monsters and the red ones I, um, I think it's the red the yellow ones are gold foil and the red ones are for legendary but it could be the other way around either way actually yes i see now red is for legendary uh yellow is for gold there it is so that's my daily reward Without further ado, let's get into some rank battle. We're going to do some more on the diamond level. Uh, we're about halfway through the season. The season is 15 days long. We're at seven days left, seven and a half. I find this is when the, th the herds are so thin and you have your opportunity to climb. Like, look at this. My deck's over a million power, but I'm fighting against a dude with 500,000. The reason that is, is because, in part, a lot of the 2 million, 3 million, 4 million, 10 million power decks have climbed to the the tippy top of, of diamond or even on champion so they aren't in the way in diamond two or diamond three they're totally out of the way and the match the matchmaker is not going to pair me with them unless kind of it's re there's really few players playing or um it's kind of at the i guess that's the only real reason if there was very few players playing but nowadays, with all the players that are actively uh, playing and grinding in this in this in this game, it's so rare. I find 
the matches are usually appropriate to your rank. Okay, so let's get into this one. We're slow and no heals. Slow and no heals. Hmm. See, that's a nightmare. It's not even full. But look at the hit points. Look at the blast, the speed. It's a good card. Let's give that a shot. The Gorlodon with the Marrow's Ghost. I really, I keep talking about the Marrow's Ghost. I love that card for the three mana cost and the Void Armor. Yeah, it's... You know, it's it's not a strong card. I mean, it's got um, only three attack. But, you know, three attack with essentially eight hit points. And those are eight hit points that can be, can be stretched further because, you know, if, if he hits me down to one armor and then, he, and then the five, this Minotaur hits me one more time, that one armor is going to eat the full cost. And that way, armor is better than straight up hit points. Because you get there's situations where you might you might you know absorb more hit points than than is possible with just because you get that one armor. So and then the, just the magic opportunity, right? Just the 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 prevention of just the the quick snipe, and then also this this type of build where it's got mostly armor and one hit point attracts any sort of opportunity attackers, which is which can be something you plan around and, and really be advantageous to you. I think I'm going to win. Yeah. Because what's going to happen is I'm going to hit him, I'm, I'm going to Thorn Gorlodon, then Gorlodon's going to go Beast Mode. Meanwhile, he's going to be sniping my Shadowy Presence, but it's not doesn't matter because Shadowy Presence doesn't attack. Now, look at that, Gorlodon's ready to go. If I just put gold on in front, the halfling would have just devoured half of my, my power rating, right? Go. Oh. <clears throat> nice. I'm really glad we got to finish one more with that guy. Now, I am kind of. Ooh, the stun. Okay. No good. That uh, stunner neutral monster is so powerful for three cost. What an amazing monster. I got all my filters set, but I the new computer and the new filters. Uh, if it if it sounds off, guys, let me know in the comments. Let's go. Okay. Archery. Everybody's got blast. I wanna shoot first. I wanna I wanna be first. I really like black for all the low level, low mana cost, but really powerful uh, melee monsters such as Skeleton Assassin, Undead Badger, Maggots, and of course. If you have parasitic growth, you know, that's four monsters for 12 mana. Because remember, Byzantine Kitty's taking up seven. So really, all my monsters here are just being 12 mana. And then you go like this, Shadowy Essence, Shadowy Presence, and you're only at 20 with Byzantine Kitty. And you can put whoever you want in, right? You want to do... Gorlodon, you want to do... Let's see, what, who should I do? Yeah, I should do the Vigilator. Because Archery can work in the first position. Vigilator has Archery and Melee. He's going to do two separate attacks for each. So this is the play. Now, as much as I love the Parasitic Growth and the Maggots, neither of them are... like They're good, but I have left for mana, so we need to look at whether we maybe change something here. Like I could go like this. 
just do like a big, more powerful attack, right? Hmm, you know, we got it because of the blast, we have to go Garlodon, don't we? Yeah, that's the play. And then I leave the Undead Badger at the back because he's the fastest of the remain of these guys, giving him the most probability to dodge. Saw your guys' comments on my little clickbait two minute uh, video last night. I uh, I appreciate that some of you were <laughs> not fans of that uh, that type of clickbait. Just trying to be funny. Appreciate you guys. I saw your comments. Thanks for for both. You know those of you who uh, just sent encouragement, and said like you know see you when we see you, but also those of you who said you know you didn't appreciate. It. I I hear you. I get it. Let's see what happens here. He's got a lot of archery damage. Question is. Am I hitting so fast that I'm going to delete some of those guys before he even has a chance? Right? Even my maggots are going to go next. And then they just pissed off the Gorlodon. Look at the just destruction. This team is powerful. But with blast damage, you want to go first. Like, you don't want to mess around waiting with slow players slow monsters the gorlodon is one exception i'm willing to wait on the gorlodon because by the time he goes he's going to get in rage and he's going to be even more powerful but and he has so many hit points to start with um and he's never he's not going to be in my first position so he's not going to take the brunt of the damage he's going to be he's going to take a little bit of blast damage so you need speed if you're going to play in a blast game that's the point and the kitty gives it, right? Kitty give me two speed on everybody, which makes it so much easier. So we need exploding dwarf. I like to have I really like ant miners, especially in this mode, because he's gonna get you know five or six hits, hit points. And he's gonna be a secondary tank if dwarf doesn't work out. Now I'm tempted to do Enchanted Pixie. But then again, you know what we need? Another healer. Just in case Buddy throws out some crazy, you know, high hit point monster and I get an Exploring Dwarf with like 15 hit points, then I'm going to want two healers. And if I'm wrong, you know, having the Tortesian Chief is not a bad play because he still has the three magic. <clears throat> yeah, this could be a problem. Now, if I can manage to hit him, let's see what's going to happen here. Is he going to give, he's not, he's not, he doesn't have any buffs to make this guy have higher hit points. So do I have anything to, I'm going to get one more. Mm, I'm not going to delete the, the chicken. With the first hit, that's a shame. I'm predicting victory though. He doesn't have thorns to heal off. Got the double heal off. Now he is going to kill me, unless he misses that. But see, look, the ant miner just steps up, and he's got all kinds of hit points, because we've already killed a few people. And then Flame Monkey throws the armor back. I love this, this combo. Three cost for the Flame Monkey and the ant miner, and you're going to get repair. You're going to have, you're going to have the scavenge, so often you get high hit points. Look at this guy. He's got 12 hit points plus an armor. Shield and scavenge. Five speed and three attack. It's like... For two cost? Are you kidding me? Yeah, you know, you have to put him in the right position, and there are situations where he's not going to stay alive long enough, but clearly that play worked. And um, I, I do love putting him in the second position. 
are we doing for time? 15. Let's try and go for 20 minutes. See if we can put a little winning streak together here. See if we can see something actually kind of um, different. That's always nice when we can when we can check in on a battle that is a bit, you know, something about it, a bit different. So we can analyze it and interpret and maybe generalize. That's what we're about here. Okay, small monsters first. So my first thought is red with the Cerebus. But what's he like to do? Okay, he can't do that. Yeah, he's probably going to do magic because he's going to go he has the level 10 spine turtle. He's got the Medusa. I saw it somewhere. I think. No, I haven't seen. Yeah, he's going to do something like this. So what do I want to do? Hard magic? Hmm. So taking away... I don't think Dragon really has any four level monsters that I'm gonna... Maybe Manticore. Hmm. Hmm. What I'm looking at here. Okay. So let's go with thorns, thorns. Oh, Surrender. I was feeling good about that, too. So, that was pretty crazy this morning with the Bitcoin down like $10,000 or something. What's it at now? Bitcoin 47. Down 10% on the day. Pretty sure. Let's see. Fell hard from like 50 to 44 so six six or seven thousand dollars and if you count up here it's even more right yeah i don't know what to make of it but i, I watch blockchain backer and i'm pretty confident his plan makes sense so i'm not scared at all i did sell a little bit of crypto today but it wasn't because i was paying i, I had planned to sell it because of the computer i sold it I was supposed to sell it yesterday, but I just couldn't. And so today I got the same price because Hive didn't drop at all, really. Rage. Rage. So, I like the big hit points. Hmm, that's... Interesting, but I don't know. Feels like two little hit points with this play here. Let's go. With the retaliate. With the retaliate, I like this actually. But not with the Byzantine Kitty. So we're gonna go. Give her an extra hit point. I'm gonna go. Hmm. I didn't have I didn't bring any heals. Hmm. Well, he was going to cancel my heal anyways. I don't love what I'm looking at here. 
This is a card that people keep telling me to check out, Giant Scorpion. Let's watch how this works, because it looks, to me, I'm saying it looks so vulnerable. But then again, you know, it's a lot like my Crystal Jaguar, only it's got Poison instead of Retaliate, and it's got one more hit point. You know, it's very similar. One more, one more attack point. A little bit less armor and, and, and health. Very similar. Hmm. Just a big erasure right there. I miss too. I need to see some retaliates that work. See, if I retaliated on the Pegasus, you know, maybe this would look a lot better. Send the Pegasus. Okay. Okay. This is working out, eh? It's not, it's far from done because, okay, that was huge. I thought the nine speed was going to be a real problem for me. Unfortunately, the peace, Peacekeeper had the eight speed and we landed that shot. Look at the 70, 70 rank points we're flying now. Look at the capture rate at 85%. We're getting all kinds of bonuses on the DC rewards. DC rewards have sure gone down. Now, it's probably not because they've gone down so much as it's because the number of players have skyrocketed because the pool of DC available on a daily basis is so big based on the algorithmic inflation. And then every game is, um, takes a piece of that pie based on how much activity there is on the blockchain for the you know for this game. So if if there's only 10 games in a whole day, the pie is split, split between the 10 uh, between the five winners of those 10 games. But actually there's tens of thousands more players every day now, and so the pie, although it's bigger, is being split, you know, smaller and smaller. Okay, so we get we must be getting close. Um, but you know what, we're 22, but still let's, let's, let's try and get like one really kind of fun one here. Something that we're going to hopefully see, you know, an interesting look. This guy likes his opportunity. Every one of these plays has an opportunity. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and counter an opportunity. And with this too, we're going to try and counter opportunity. First of all, I like hmm, black is the way to go for me in this situation. So we want Ghost Marrow. We also want Enchanted Defender because they're gonna they're gonna be for the armor is gonna help with the magic. But they're gonna they're gonna distract marrow in the background. Maybe I don't. Let me think about that. Hmm. See, if I put Marrow's Ghost, if I put Enchanted Defender in the front end, they're going to have to go at him. All, all of his opportunity attackers, which I'm confident he's going to send some, they're going to get Thorn damaged. And then when they defeat him, they're going to be focused on the Marrow. While, meanwhile, I'm going to be doing my thing with these guys, you know, going at the back end. It might work. I'm feeling like this is a good play. And then I'm even, oops, i am even got my... Curse slime ball. You know what? Yeah, curse slime ball in the front. And then the the any sort of gives my enchanted defender one more chance. Yeah, let's give this a go. This will be the last one because this is kind of fun. I'm expecting him to play opportunity because I saw that he used three different opportunity monsters on, on in his various last five games. So he's gonna do the vulture. Vulture. 
I was expecting two different um, opportunities, but that's okay. Because I saw that he had dragon opportunities, two different dragon opportunity monsters. Maybe dragon wasn't available. I didn't notice that. So I'm a little worried about his sneak attack because it's going right it's going right at my my players. That's helpful. But yeah, you know, it's just no, this is not working. If I had if I had put the Marrow's Ghost in the front. And if I put that defender, elephant defender, or whatever it's called, in the back, I would have prepared myself for a sneak attack. I also would have distracted any sort of opportunity attackers. That would have been a better play. But see, even in your losses in this game, you're gonna if you if you take time to analyze them, you're gonna see ways you could improve next time. And so yeah, for sure, in that context, marrow at the front, defender at the back. Dang. Well, anyways, that was a fun one. Okay, um, I'm going to call it there for now. i got some other things i got to take care of, but we'll do another video later on in the lower level silver. Thanks for your time and attention. Have an amazing day. God bless.